Welcome gamers, this week's episode of Last Call Gaming, we're on episode number 157. Today is December 22nd. My name is Craig Perales, joining me as always, Andrew Montemayor, and on our end of the year episode, my brother of course, Gino Perales, boys. We made it. Hey, 2022 is in the books now. Moving forward, it's going to be in the rearview mirror. Overall, man, I think with all the growth we had this year, it's a pretty solid year for the channel. I'm super excited, and I'm more excited for next year just to kind of see where we can really take it. Yeah. And yeah. You, this, I think you've probably been on more maybe this year than I think you were the last couple. Is this one where he got deathly sick? This year or was that last year? Both. <laughs> he's good for he's I'm, good for a good monkey I'm, I'm, each year. I'm for, getting better each year. Nice. So I did want to say um, a big shout out for happy birthdays. Um, our mother's birthday just happened recently for uh, my mom Lisa. So happy birthday! And then it's Adeline's birthday today. She's turning fifteen. Fifteen. So happy day. birthday to you, Adeline. Speaking of shout-outs, I guess I'll shout myself out because mine just passed too. <laughs> right you are, oh, Craig. Well, you know, the only one that really mattered. I gave you your presents. You didn't even seem to enjoy them. I did. I told you I co I've been collecting alien <laughs> comics. <laughs> so I'm super glad. Hey, it's so funny because like, we just talked about his birthday and I wrote the happy birthdays down. I can <laughs> to add you. <laughs> so well, the 19th came and went. So did you have a good birthday? Oh, it was great. I didn't get an invite. I, I feel like it's so hard to get like everyone together around the time. Anymore. I'm not everyone. And, you know, I think I stopped trying to plan my birthday. Two years ago? No, a while ago because Mary Osmondson has her birthday on like the same day or something. And so it was always so split that I was like, all right, fuck it. Like, I'm just not even going to bother anymore. You can see it and in then the competition? It just, well, she's not even here and she's still winning. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, guys, this is our end of the year episode. Um, next week, there won't be another Last Call Gaming episode, but we will have another mm -hmm. video up for you guys for the, our Andrew and I's end of the year top five games that we played for 2022. So there will be a little something for the um, for the next week, but then we'll officially resume starting January 6th or whatever it is. We'll be back in business. So, mm -hmm. uh, with that down, guys, if you're watching the YouTube version of this show, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that share button, and hit the notification bell to be updated on all of our uh, upcoming videos. If you guys are interested in following us on any of the social media platforms, check out our Linktree link, which is in the description of the YouTube video. And if you guys are listening to the audio-only version of this podcast, uh, check it out on whatever podca podcast platform you prefer. But as of right now, Anchor is the home for us, and from there, you guys can actually join and donate money to help our channel get bigger. So, is there anything else you guys want to add before we get into what are you up to? No. Make sure you do at least leave us like, please, if you can, because it does help with the algorithm <laughs> that we can't seem to figure out, but hopefully one day we'll really kind of just break on through, you know? <laughs> I feel you. So, guys, uh, before we get into our uh, main topics, we like to do What Are You Up To, where we take a second and talk about anything we've been watching, what we've been playing, kind of, you know, loosen up the old windpipe. So I'll go first. You want to jump on first? Hey, with no notes, let's, what do you got? I'm going first because I actually have not done anything. Nothing with, since last week? No, I've just been playing Call of Duty and a little bit Did of Did you Final try Fantasy. the raids yet at all? No, because Devin, uh, I think his baby is due today, so congratulations oh, if your baby is born. I know we have an early one last time. But no, I was kind of waiting for him. I told him I'd wait for him before I try it. Unless it gets close enough for it to expire. But with my birthday, Christmas shopping, everything like that, I have not had time to do anything. So that's why I want to go first. I have not done nothing exciting besides binge watch Law and & Order. And cruise, you're still cruising on uh, <laughs> Crisis Core? I did a little bit of grinding and it kind of is like... I feel I really liked it before and I it's really kind of like picking up for me now. Especially now that I'm understanding the combat like a little bit better and how things function. I'm actually really, really loving it. I'm having such a good time with it. Excellent. Gene, what do you uh what have you been watching? What have you been playing? Uh playing was the Vampire Hunters. You guys introduced me to that and I just went down Vampire the Survivor. Vampire Survivor. Survivors, yeah. I always say hunters. Uh went down the rabbit hole with that. It was when we on the VGA they won the Best Indie Award. I believe they That's did. That's the one they award, so Yeah. So yeah, it's a, well. There's two categories. There's best indie and best indie debut. I forget which one I they think were. They did in. the indie one, but it is uh, a pretty intense game. I don't really sweat during games very much. Halo's oh, one okay. of them, but this game gets you going. And it, it's I don't like Super Nintendo graphics. I can't go back and play dated games, but the graphics on this game are perfect. It starts super slow and just builds up to a tempo that just is invigorating. Well, yeah, you. Did, it's addicting, man. Would you, and would you say that that the Grim Reaper is probably one of the harder things? Grim Reaper is supposed to be the hardest person to get just because his life skills with how. Uh, how you level and I found a, a YouTube video that kind of it's not uh, breaking the game or, or anything but you find a little glitch but it took me like four or five hours and I kept losing losing and I came over Craig's for lunch finally got him the other day yeah, so I was cool super to watch, excited man, for I was that like, Jesus. it just gets intense if you haven't played it I highly recommend it it's on the game Pass. I have not uh, and then as far as uh, 
watching. I was at lunch with Six the other day, and he had recommended uh, Klaus. And so it's a Christmas movie that I've never seen. Even though I recommended it like three years ago to him. Year, yeah, and so it's on Netflix. I highly recommend watching it. It's almost like an origin story of Santa Claus, and it has um, it's about this postmaster's son who's um, entitled, but they so he sends him to like the Arctic, and he has to solve some problems. Super good movie. I definitely recommend watching it, especially if you have a family. Good Christmas movie. You see it was on Netflix? It's on Netflix. Nice. So, as Watch far it. as what uh, I've been watching is I finally got around to watching uh, Samaritan, which is on Ooh, Amazon yeah. Prime at the moment. It was this kind of telling of, um, with Sylvester Stallone in it about, a, as a hero from the past, kind of being re-found out in modern day. Did you end up watching Samaritan? No, I didn't even know it was out yet, but the, it looked pretty cool. The, I, okay, yeah, the trailer looked dope. The movie's... Okay, it's a, it's a good B movie. I'd B say movie. like a maybe a C plus. I really C plus. I didn't like any of the villains besides the main guy because he's the dude from Game of Thrones. He's oh, the brother. Yeah, all the henchmen were all fucking dorks. Yeah, I, they're all hanging out with like this nine year old kid, and I'm, are they supposed to be like twenty four? Like I didn't get hey, that. We don't know Eastern inner city politics. <laughs> I guess I don't. But uh, <laughs> I didn't like the henchmen. I thought the movie, at least for me, was it, I, I predicted the whole thing. And like the end of the first act, and I was like, okay, if this is where this movie goes, then I've already figured it out. And uh, the action's good. I love Sylvester Stallone in it, yeah. and I love the kid in it. It's just everybody else I thought was like subpar. It almost looked like this was their first acting job. And he wasn't the kid from. Um, He's the kid from Umbrella Academy. Uh, Umbrella Academy. Yeah. He's the the knife guy's. Uh, son. Yeah. So I like him, and he. So he. I think he's got a good career on his hand if he's going to be getting these kind of roles and stuff. So. Yeah, I didn't see anything coming until the five minutes before in the third. <laughs> before the end, so yeah, it was so. definitely a good one for me. Uh, so yeah, I, I that's it. what I watched. And uh, I mean, if you want to check out a good sly movie, check it out. But I would say yeah. it's completely skippable. Um, as far as what I've been playing, I re picked back up Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope, which is a game that's developed by Ubisoft Milan and Ubisoft Paris, published by Ubisoft. Dropped October 20th, so a little earlier this year. And uh, I got to say, man, now that I'm getting back into it, we always talk about how we want another Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. We'll probably never see that game. But for me, this is as close as it's going to get. I know you... I know we both played and you really like the Paper Mario game. Well, I forget what the last one Origami King. Yeah. But if I'm looking for Mario RPG mechanics, like this is the game that actually does it correct. Like mm-hmm. the way they, they took everything from number one and 100% improved on it. And number one was good. Number one's a good game. So this is just that much better. And the way you can set up combat is there's just so many more things you can do before you even start battling. Like all the dashes you can do, everybody gets one. The whole way you can set up like the tactile combat of it is super interesting. The sparks that give you more powers, the customizable abilities for your teams that you want to do. Like do you want to build a team that's built for fighting bosses? Do you want to build a team that's set up to do the survive matches. You can like build these different teams because every battle you get a chance to respec all your guys if you want and switch out the team members. So you're not stuck in like a Final Fantasy loop where you're like, oh shit, I didn't, I didn't switch my guy out. It's like, you get to do it in the beginning of every battle. I'm like, dude, I love it. Cause like, do, am I getting bored of Mario and Luigi? Uh, let me switch over to Edge and, and Rabbid. And you're not losing anything. And, not lo- and everyone, everyone has experience shares. So for me, it's like, dude, this is good shit. And if you want to cheese it, which I didn't know. I think I was watching something and somebody pointed out. There's I didn't know there was an invulnerability mode. So if it is something you just want to play, check it out and run through it. You can, but I'm I haven't done that yet because I like because I'm using uh, Rabid Peach and she's got like good healing abilities. So I, I'm I'm making sure I'm using all the yeah. all the mechanics. So I'll say I like the sound of that because um, I don't know if it was in the original, but Crisis Core has something like that to where mm-hmm. you're fighting and obviously like you could be at the end of like a chapter. You don't have to redo the chapter. If you die, you can restart from the start of that battle, but it asks you, would you like to change out your equipment or material yeah, first? Thing, yeah. So I'm like, oh man, that's so convenient because now when I had everything built for, you know, people that are weak against fire and now this dude's weak against lightning, I didn't have any lightning shit. So I'm kind of just trying to brute force my way through versus when I lose, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I can just put on the lightning and now it's, it's so much easier. Yeah, there was, there was this one mission I ran into, their survive missions. And so I'm level, I was probably nine when I did it and all the guys that were on there were level 17. And the whole point of it is just survive six rounds of it without dying. And I was doing, I'm like, ah, I don't think I could do better because I ended up using like two items that better. I didn't want to waste. So I hit restart, and when it restarted, it let me reboot it, pick my team, and I switched it out to Peach because she does, like, buffs and stuff. And I'm like, cool, I, I made a whole different team just for that particular mode of combat. So, I don't know, the game is excellent, and I actually have it. And it's one of the few games I didn't get digitally, so I have a hard copy of it if any of you guys want to play it. on. I'd probably Switch. be down to try it. Yeah, it's I might shit. be able to play it 
next quarter. Yeah, Cien's playing it too, and I, I th- I'm on World 2, or just getting into World oh. 3, and I think he says there's 6. I, I, I'd imagine I'm maybe halfway through the game. That being said, I did just start High on Life. Last oh, how do you how do you like it, dude? I okay, I, I I know I uh, I've never watched Rick and Morty, so I know a lot of it's based on the the creators did that. The game's fucking hilarious. I'm oh, like, I mean, I'm it's, like two it's hours funny. in. I beat the first bounty. I'm going on my second one. It's a good fucking game on the Game Pass. You know, so I would imagine. Did you start it yet? No, dude, I've seen like see, snippets of it. I think the funniest thing Sam I've seen. Have, snaps. Have you done the mission where you're supposed to like watch some dude's bike? No, I, I've only, uh, I'm on the second bounty too. That's yeah, that, that's gotten. that's it's got to be a little bit further. Uh, in, in there, the game. There, I, I won't spoil it or anything, but there's like a mission where like this dude's like, "Hey man, I got to go grab something," and you're just supposed to like keep an eye on this fucking bike, and it like devolves into this whole fucking thing. I'm like, God, dude, that was so fucking dude. hilarious. I can't wait to try this game. It, it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah it's I would say number one on the Game Pass. Yeah, I would say it's, it's a very particular type of comedy. So if it's something that because I could see that. Being annoying to people, or maybe the joke's not landing. Oh, so, it starts out. It ain't for kids to watch. Oh yeah, to it's watch a play. It started out uh, a little hardcore. So I yeah. mean, that was that was pretty funny though. So I would say, yeah, watch maybe watch the trailer again, or, or watch some gameplay and make sure that co- that kind of comedy is for you because it definitely is for me. I mean, dude, because that guy is Rick and Morty, oh, dude, like, like doing the voices. Hilarious. I'm like, yeah. I, I know, I know that from somewhere, but I wouldn't say the combat is anything special. It's not like a revolutionary for FPS type of game. But oh, what yeah. they did with the FPS, with the comedy and the the style of the game, yeah. makes it very unique. So I'm the only reason I put it down is because I was playing it and I'm I'm following an achievement guide because it's very doable to do the foul. But two of my things are glitched. One, the guys, the te- so in the game, this the dude that sits on the couch is watching TV constantly, and it's oh, supposed to, and it's supposed to be changing. Mine's stuck on that movie. So mine, mine won't change. So there's an achievement for to get something. I can't get that. And there's another one. Once you give this kid like the bongos, or whatever he's playing, there's a crowd around there. And my and I was reading. It said if the crowd's not there, your game's bugged. So I'm like, I'll I can put this down for a month, and then hopefully it gets patched up and I can continue playing it. But at least I've got my feet wet with it. And uh, I would highly recommend it if yours isn't bugged or you're like Denny Six and you don't really give a shit about getting. Oh all yeah, the I'm on story so. mode and I'm cruising. Yeah. So yeah, excellent. But it's solid. Uh, anything else? Did anyone forgot to play? Okay. So, with that down and out of the way, guys, leave your comments down below of what you've been watching, what you've been playing. Give us some nice suggestions since we will have a good week off. Maybe try some new movies, some shows, things like that. But instead of picking out main topics like we usually do, since this is the end of the year video, we'd like to just take questions. So, we're going to move into questions of the week and guys if you want to put questions uh, for us to answer in the show you can do so a couple of ways you guys can leave them in the youtube comment section down below we can snag them there you guys can send them to lastcallproductions at gmail.com or you can find me on social media at craig paralysis and i can find them there so with that being said guys the first question comes from and i I thought this name was funny pokemon cash (laughs) atchum so (laughs) i kind of laughed at that one it says hey guys been seeing that ash is finally getting his retirement in my heart, he lives on forever, but I like that he finally had a full journey and won. Any thoughts? So, uh, before I get to you guys' opinion, I just want to read this real quick, and this comes from Screen Rant to kind of just um, uh, put it in context. And it says, A poster celebrating the end of Ash's epic journey shows every Pokemon that the trainer from Pallet Town ever caught during his adventures. Oh, cool. The anime will change its main character for the first time starting in April 2023, so this is the best time to remember every Pokemon who fought alongside Ash for the past 25 years. The announcement that Ash Ketchum will no longer be the main character of the Pokemon anime is still reverberating among the community of Nintendo and Game Freak's popular franchise. Some fans already speculated that this could be the case when Ash surprisingly fulfilled his lifelong dream and became world champion for the first time in the anime. Winning the World Coronation Series... The longest running joke in the entire franchise was the fact that despite 25 long years of non-stop Pokemon battles, Ash would always fall short of winning a championship. When this finally happened, it was only natural to speculate that it was perhaps time for Ash's to hang his Pokeballs and retire. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's clear that when you started the original one, he does grow a bit, right? So it's not one of these shows where he's been stuck in the body of an 11-year-old for 25 years. Yeah, it looks like he goes at least two years. Yeah, so it, it is some type of progression. But I thought, wasn't there already part of the Pokemon show where he wasn't the main guy? I remember, wasn't there a version where there was a girl walking around and Ash wasn't in it and she was traveling like with Brock? So in my mind, I thought they've already done a, a, a version of the show 
where Ash wasn't the main focus. But I, I guess I could be wrong. I think there's a few different series running, and they could have just been running parallel. Because I actually look, I looked up a couple things. So on, like the on core one always like, had Ash. Yeah, there's twelve. There's like journeys. There's wasn't this, there like there's an that. X and Y or yeah, something? Yeah, there, there's at least twelve different like running things on it. So, so hearing that, what are you guys' initial thoughts? That Ash and Angel will start with you. Your first thoughts that not only because Ash has been. I mean, we're 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 men of a certain age where. That was the cartoon back then. You know, we've all watched it. You know, I wouldn't say front to back because there's just been so much excess, but it was all part of our life. Everybody knows that song. I mean, I don't know. How do you feel the Ash is retiring? Well, well deserved, or they could, probably could have squeezed the juice out of that a little more. I think it's well deserved, and it's kind of about time to come up with somebody mm-hmm. else. I kind of hope they retire other aspects of it as well, though, too. Like maybe some of his Pokemon get some new face in there, but more importantly, get like. As much as I love Team Rocket, that's always been one of my favorite parts with Jesse James and Meowth. Hopefully get them out and maybe not replicate that because I don't know that you can. But maybe some sort of new group that's like the equivalent equivalent of Team Rocket that's cool and not like Team Star. Like I didn't really care for Team Star, but some something along those lines. But I think it's well deserved. I mean, it's been however long. I don't even know where you watch Pokemon anymore. Like is that besides like Cartoon Network, but... Isn't Cartoon Network like done or something like that? They were saying like yeah, but yeah, I've been hearing about that too. I mean, as far yeah, as far as it's all on Netflix, I and mean, you can watch all this and Crunchyroll. I'm sure you can find it there. Yeah, I was gonna say I haven't. I followed some of his bigger journeys or some of his bigger moments, but I haven't watched it. Watched it ever since I is is it the when he goes to Johto and then the Orange Island and stuff like that. So whatever was the Gold and Silver series afterwards, I kind of dipped in and out in and out. I've been a bigger fan of more of like a I've shown you guys before like the Pokemon Red, Red where yeah, it follows Red that and it's, it seems almost like it's a little bit more mature. Not that that's really what we would need for like a, a, another cartoon, but I'm more interested in those than a continuation of Ash. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Um, first and foremost, yeah, Ash has been like a brother to you. It has, and uh, he was the original. When we, it literally started when we were ten years old. I remember going to Hastings buying the comics, so we are the ones who grew up with Ash. I'm very proud that he finally did it because I once I read it, I was like, well, let me do a little research. Why hasn't he won? I guess in every uh, section that he goes to, he always starts with a brand new team. So it's not like he's Pikachu is the only consistent. So I'm glad that he finally made the dream. Twenty five years later, the only reason he ran that long. It's not because of him. It's because of Pikachu. Because once you retire Ash, you have to retire Pikachu. Yeah. You have to move on. You know, that's and a good point. I didn't it is, that's the only that. reason. Because once Pikachu's gone, that's a huge moneymaker for the whole series. Yeah, definitely a mascot. So financially, I totally get why they ran it to the fucking ground. I think 25 years is a good time to cap it. He explored every area. Super proud that he finally did it. Um, I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of Pikachu. I know Chet loves Raichu. I'm, I'm actually kind of glad to see that shift. The only thing is... I don't want to see new character. I wish it was just Ash, just without Pikachu. I don't know, <laughs> but you know, it is final, finally time. New generation. Um, Did it say they're retiring Pikachu? I thought it was just Ash. I there's no they, way they're getting rid of Pikachu. I, I How, be, I be it would be so, I'll tell you what they're. It would be so well, corny no, 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 to no, have no. a new Over group of people and still have a Pikachu there. That yeah. that would be the complete cash grab, in my opinion. If you reset him and he's still in it, here's how they're gonna get you: is it's gonna be a Ditto that's transformed into a Pikachu to continue because the show. Ash was their hero and they want to be just like. Him. <laughs> I'm catching a Pikachu too. Yeah, that is so, interesting. Um, that's why I think it ran for so long, and he just couldn't win, couldn't win, couldn't win. But, uh, uh dude, what thoughts? Um, I think it's about time. I, I, to be honest with you, I was kind of confused of why this show went on. I was reading there was an interview, and the creator was saying something along the lines of like, "Yeah, the the thing's always been that when Ash finally, if and when he beats it." Then it's over for him, and then it j- I guess it just took them this long to do it. So yeah, Ash I wasn't no. thinking about that. Yeah, because Pikachu would be if they. Re- I mean, that's an interesting point. Now, do- Ash is clearly gone. You have is, to. Is Pikachu? I would imagine that you'd have to because I can to. never see him in a world where he gives him to someone else to continue the journey. I mm-hmm. mean, they're they're right and die together. And dude, that is a billion dollar franchise based on not Ash, Pikachu. It could be a different Pikachu. Yeah. The, and the cool thing was, if you watch Journeys, um, it actually has cameos of every person he's ever been with. So Brock and Misty and all the original people are actually in the last season. And it's supposed to be, he's supposed to be in the next 11 episodes of the next series transitioning. So he's not out, like he's going to do a nice little outro before he's completely gone, which is kind of nice. Oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah. But let's talk about that team, huh? Well, before we do that, since you're bringing him to the next one, I just want to point out, if you guys haven't seen it, there is a picture that popped up. And if you're watching the YouTube version, you can see that now. And it says... The first look of the Pokemon anime series, the new main characters, Liko and Roy. 
the pair will be replacing Ash and and uh, there, I guess it says right there and Pikachu okay. once their 25 year journey ends in January 2023. So it is because it's showing these two um, these two new trainers, but it's showing them with all three of the starters. It is interesting that they're going to be starting with a pair going out instead of like Ash and then gaining a a squad. So before we get into Ash's awesome lineup of guys, um, those are the two guys. That are, those are the two people that are going to replace them. I mean, they look fine, I guess. I mean, I don't... I wonder if that's main and rival. We don't know who's who or if they're going uh, jointly because of all the new intro stuff with double teams and Oh, yeah, I guess they could be doing like an Ash and Gary situation. It'd be interesting to see how they go with it, but they look cool. I think that'd be a cool joint thing to do because then you can really kind of cement at that point that it really is a role to be like, okay, well, this person's going on this adventure here, so I'm going to do that. So while one person's doing electric, the other could be doing water. And then ultimately lead up to, like, you know, we were good friends, we'd done whatever along the way. Now we're rivals at the end of the championship, and that would be a cool way to kind of culminate the season. In 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll see you in another 25. Yeah, I don't have the strength for another 25. But, yeah, before we move off Imagine this. Imagine being 60 by the time the next one Dude, gets Dude, that over. would be wild. Dude. Um, I do want to just point out, because I think you had it written down, too, is uh, uh, Ash's team that finally did it. So his final yep. team that allowed him to clinch the world title had Pikachu, Dracovish, Gengar, Surfetched, Lucario, and Dragonite. So obviously Pikachu is going to be on the team. I think another guy that caught a lot of people's eye when the neck, when Gold and Silver came out was Lucario. Mm-hmm. And I remember when he got Lucario, I think he was a guy like, okay, I know he's going to play ball. For, he'll probably be on that final I team. I think Luc- Lucario was after Gold and Silver. No, I mean when the games came out. When uh. the games came out, everyone liked Go- uh, Lucario. And then at some point in the show, I remember him getting, I don't know if he started as a Ryloo, but I remember him getting Lucario. And that was, in my mind, kind of like, okay, that's another mascot kind of guy for him. In but the show or the game? No, in the yeah, show. It, in the no, show, it, yeah, he started, he, started, he started young. Yeah, and then, so I think it's cool um, that Gengar made the appearance because that was a really cool episode of how he was able to catch him. Mm-hmm. The episode when he caught Dragon, because some of these episodes I have seen when he did goes he, to Dragonite. I haven't seen that one. Did he catch a Gengar or is that his haunter? It was, some, it was this, no, if I remember right, Gengar. this one, this guy at this, at this town told his Gengar like to wait because he hated him and he left him there and it's like the seasons go by and Gengar's just waiting and waiting and waiting for like a year it seems like and he got kind of like it's almost like a dog that's been mistreated like he's Mm -hmm. weary of being around humans now and at the end Ash kind of you know they go through the storyline and at the end they end up like he's just like you want to stay with me and then he joins the team if I'm remembering it. Yeah, I started watching, that sounds pretty cool. I started yeah. watching the new series and I, and I did watch that episode. Yeah, because so. Hangover would go invisible and like still eat his food and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Dragonite was a cool one when they find the island that like no one's been able to find. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't remember the, the Sir Fetch and I definitely don't remember him catching Dracovish. But as far as as far as far a solid team that is worthy to you know not only beat the Elite Four but to win the World Championship, I got to say it looks good on paper. The only one I'm... I'm curious about is is Sir Fetch is he still a normal Pokemon or is he metal Poke I guess I should have looked up his class, but I'm just trying to think of what what um what you know what that brings well, to the party in terms of what it can be and what it's So what is. I did as I did a little research and I posted it on the last call page, it's a closer look at his team and he knows a move called like Meteor Storm or something like that. Oh, and like there's an episode where he where it shows him evolving and where he wants to be a leak master or whatever. And it, it tells the story of like how he became the, that surfetched, and the move that he learned is like super powerful potentially against oh, okay. different aspects. And it goes into like it, it goes into like the six top trainers. The thing I posted and like who his counters would be, and dragons are definitely going to be some of the top things for him. Which is why Dracovish is such a clutch move because he he has like an ice fang or yeah, something like that. Yeah, he looks dope. A, Dragonite's dope. Lucario's dope. Yeah, Pikachu's dope. As Gengar's as, dope. Yeah. Surfetch is the one I and, wasn't sure. And, what yeah, was that's the only one I'm a little. When they do it, they're like Pikachu. He learned how to do like a like some type of evolve move without getting like a like the a Thunder certain Stone? thing you had to do it with, and he learned it without it. Like I can't do it justice. Read the article I posted about it. That's why Pikachu is so strong. Gengar and Dragonite are absolute favorites. Yeah, like yeah. those have been my favorite since day one. So it's really cool to see both of them make the list. Spoiler alert! I'm pretty sure at the end, I think he reunites with his Butterfree. I think they brought. No, that yeah, back I did too. see something about that. He finally fu- the Butterfree he let go, and, and like in like episode <laughs> twenty two, comes back and he's got like his partner with him, and the pink and, one, and yeah, he's got like this scarf around him, and he gets to give him like that hug. It was a very, very well done. Oh, I cry. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, now correct me if I'm wrong. Is it is the is the what you can watch still only in Japan? Have they have they yes, done it yet? Yes. Okay. It's, so it's, it's not, not out in America. Okay. Yet. No, so. no. Because no. I looked at it. Cause I was, was going to fucking watch it before. before yeah. No, I, I've been looking for my. I read all the comments. They said the the actual last battles are just fire. Like everything's supposed to be really really good. So I actually I would love to go back and watch 
the yeah, season. As soon as it's out, like, hey, it's like, <laughs> one more ride. that happened. So, um, anything else you want to add about the team? Or All right, so, was there anybody you think that should have been on his team that wasn't? You think that, like, the, Charizard should have came back and The biggest something? controversy was Charizard over uh, Dragonite. Because yeah. that's the Dragonite he originally had. He had, like, four big losses in the beginning. But he had four big redemption wins, which is why he ultimately picked him. And then, um, they, you know, so... Charizard's the only one because everybody wants to see Charizard. But. Yeah. yeah, that's the only one I can really think of too. Well, when he I mean, fucking Pell that, drives that fucking Magmar into the ground, I'll never that forget that. He quit Charizard on his team. Yeah. Okay, so that is the Pokemon news. If you guys weren't caught up on what happened with Ash's journey, it is coming to an end. Hopefully, Ash the, Trey. Hopefully the new guys are just as enjoyable, but... Uh, it's gonna be a hard thing. It's always hard to next recast, generation, man. Yeah, you know, and, and have somebody that's as likable as the original. So, uh, the next Yu-Gi-Oh's question. Yu-Gi-Oh has done it. Yu-Gi-Oh has done it, and I really like. And it's done it a few times. I really like. And it's done it well. Was was XD the one where he goes to the school and he starts he, and he starts? Um, where they have like obelisk red and or obelisk is red, obelisk blue. And I don't know. Ones. Whatever one he goes to the academy, and it's like kid with brown hair. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I actually. Really, like I that dug one. that one. Yeah, that was a good one. I think they did that oh, well wow. because they did it and then didn't have to go back to the okay. Well, we're still we're new people, but we're still using blue eyes or dark magician. You know that whole that one guy steals bring in, Yu-Gi-Oh's deck and he has to battle against it. That was a cool episode. That's where they bring in like elemental heroes and all that shit. So if they did it, maybe Pokemon can. And that one guy used to say licious. <laughs> all right, thank you. And the next question comes from Sheila T, and she writes, uh, "I'm so stoked that the Super Nintendo world is finally opening up in America." Do you guys have plans to go, and are you excited? So I did want to point out, so yeah, the Super Nintendo World is officially getting a release date in America. So if you've actually been following it, the it's it's open on February 4th, 2021. With the Hollywood annual, one. Yeah, annual pass for holders, and then March 18th was the grand opening in 2021. And I think, I believe that's just the one in Japan. So the new one that's coming out in Universal is opening on uh, February 17th. 2023 and the first thing andrew i remember we were watching it the first thing andrew said is like well are we booking our t- like are we going so definitely excited I, the thing that confused me is i thought it was going to be its own big size park like a disney that's, what I, was, that's what I thought that's too. i'm like oh too, cool like this thing's gonna because i feel like if it's something that's that big you could constantly add on to it with new with new um nintendo ip where this thing looks like it's just very focused on super mario which maybe that works maybe it doesn't but now then once I realized, oh, it's going into Universal in a section of yeah, the park. So yeah. it, I'm a little disappointed because it can only be so big because it's w- confined within a space that's only so big. Right. So I'm excited that it's going to be there. I'm sure we'll go. But at that point, you're not going to Super Nintendo World. You're going to Universal Studios, and you've got to hope that Super Nintendo World is open that day because I've been to parks where this thing's closed down for this weekend or something like that. So if you're, that's what you're trying to see, it's not a park with its own entity. It's a section of a much bigger park. So I don't know. I was excited. It went down a little bit, but it's, I mean, I still want to go. I'm excited that we're getting anything at all. I already was like planning and I'm like, all right, you know, maybe do like a weekday. Definitely not at launch. So maybe like April sounds probably like nice or maybe a little bit closer to the summer and then just head up there hopefully while school season's in and then just cruise through because i'm not like a big roller coaster guy but i'm definitely like dying to see this because i think it looks cool again i'm thought it was gonna be bigger and hoping to be bigger but hopefully maybe it's one of those things that like it's done so well it looks good that they've planned ahead like if this does really well here's how we can expand onto it yeah, and that's the thing. Super, uh, well, Universal Studios isn't like Magic Mountain, so it's not so much... Because I've been to the one in California, and I was lucky enough to get to go to the one in Florida. It's more like... Because the, like the Universal Tour that you can go on that follows like the King... Like, love it. Hey, love it. Like It's more like cool shows and attractions and things like that. So the fact that... Because the Super Nintendo World looks more kind of like interactive. It's, I don't think it's really ride-based, at least from what I saw. It's more like going into this world and kind of engaging with the different items around. So, it looks super fun. Yeah, so I was on this misconception too. When you made a good point, it was like, is it like Disneyland and California Adventure? I thought it was going to be like a standalone park. It's not. That being said, I wouldn't have known exactly what it would be, but I did actually go to Universal Studios this year with the, the family and stuff, and I can totally picture it now because there's, you know, Harry Potter, Jurassic Park, uh, um, Bart Simpson, like yeah. all the, so I could totally now picture it in there. It's only one ride. It's only yeah, this Mario Kart ride. Which is all you need. I yeah, would think. it's only um, uh, a food diner place. And there's I thought a, there was two. Because I thought there was like a Yoshi no, ride or something. Uh, uh, it's, it's just that one. 
But after going there, and because we went to Harry Potter World first, I mean, it's a nice big section, and Harry Potter has just two rides. I mean, and that you, it's cool to do that and just move on. So it would have been nice to have a whole big park, but I completely like the fact that it's in Universal after now being there because we did buy annual pass things and we are going next year. So to be able to just uh, go section to section, yeah, they can probably expand on it. But what they, the thing too is it said Mario Kart is Bowser's Challenge inside Bowser's Castle, which is said to be one of the most complex rides ever built within the entertainment industry. So they are putting a full amount of money into it and it's supposed to be one of the best rides you can go on. If you've been to Universal Studios, I think it's totally well within its, its realm to be there because it's just section, section, section of different theme worlds. So I think Did it's- Did it say what it's replacing? Um, I think they're adding on Are they actually building a section. In it? Okay. Yeah, because when we went last time, we were going on like this this tour and something was like blocked off. So I've only been there once. So I don't know if it was replacing something or if it was building it new. Could be either or, but um, it was nice because Harry Potter World only had like the two rides and the shop and the food place. And we were there for like an hour. Yeah, it's, and, more, you know, it's so, more being in the captive better than the magic of being yeah, in that and area. It's nice it's just Hogwarts. go to the, hey, we're here for an hour. Let's go to the next spot. So it'd yeah. be cool to just ride the ride, check the merch. And just move on to Jurassic Park and, and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's in a good home. I was saying, I think there's supposed to be a little bit more to it too because I know if you wear those bracelets, there's like hidden things you're supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, with well, the like bracelets. in Harry Potter, if you buy a wand, there's a whole section of kids that you can do different spells at it. It's probably the same right. thing. There's interactive stuff the whole time. I was saying, I wonder if it's the Japanese one then because I remember when I was looking online that it specifically said there was two rides because another one's like this Yoshi thing that like you fucking get in. Yeah. And again, it's not like a ride ride. It's just something you like cruise around in or whatever. Maybe that's the Japan one. I don't know. Fucking Japan. Yeah, but it's also kind of cool just to tie in with the synergy is that the movie coming out is actually, pro the production company is Universal Pictures. So it's oh, like, so that's like, fair. Yeah, because I was thinking, I'm like, Oh, I'm like, I wonder why Universal Studios are not like anywhere else or blah, blah, blah. And I was looking up, it's like, oh, it's a Universal picture. So it completely makes sense that now they have a movie tie-in with their theme park. It'd be, be interesting in to get like a Nintendo World and then you get Mario and Donkey Kong and you get all these That's what I was yeah, thinking. That's what I was kind of under the assumption, but uh, I, I didn't know it was part of Universal Studios until today. Nice. So uh, anything else on that? Guys? Nope. All right, I'm, so. I'm an annual pass holder and I will be going. Next yeah, year. we're going for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, thank you for the question, and um, let us know if you've got plans to go check that out. So, our next question comes from uh, Michael S., and they write, uh, Did you guys see the new Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse trailer? I have to say, this excites me a lot, especially coming off of what they were able to pull off with the Tom Holland crossover. Oh, yeah. So, um, I don't know, is it a spoiler to talk about the live-action Spider-Man movie and what they were able to do with Spider-Man? Did it come out last year? I think so. Would you I'd say no. Just, spoiler no. Oh, so, Doctor Strange came out after that. Yeah. So yeah. So we. So to point out what your what your question's saying is yeah they did a really great job of doing a live action Amazing. crossover with Spider Man. This is going to be hopefully the anime equivalent of it, but on a much bigger scale. So I thought Into the Spider Verse was probably one of the best. Not only comic book movies, but like just movies in general that came I out. I love hit soundtracks yeah, they, from oh, this was Post Malone. <laughs> it, it was it was it was definitely good shit, and I like in this one. It's definitely he's moving forward. It's it's not taking place, you know, right afterwards. You he, can tell he's, he's older. Yeah, he's he's grown up a little bit. It's obviously got um, Spider Gwen in there. The whole concept, obviously, if you've seen the trailer, is this. Um, I wouldn't say a reintroduction, but obviously this introduction of Spider-Man. And then if you kind of look at it more closely, some of them are for the Insomniac games. Some of them are from the old uh, the old PlayStation games. Andrew was pointing out that um, one of them is from the animated 90s cartoon. So they're not just doing renditions that exist in their movie world. They're literally pulling them from other media. It's every so iteration we've probably I'm, ever seen. I want to know what we haven't seen yet so far. You know what I mean? Because obviously uh, Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man uh, 2099... He's obviously in this. That's part. my favorite part. Yeah, I'm like, dude, fuck yeah! Spider Man 299 is finally getting at least an on screen appearance. Mm -hmm. I'm what I'm curious is I hope the storyline isn't kind of lame because it I, I do see this thing of sh he gets there and everyone's fine with him and now what is he supposed to be the catalyst that's folding in the worlds and now they all want to beat the shit out of him? So I'm hopefully because that's clearly what it kind of looks like. I'm hoping that it's explained well, done right, makes sense, and I love it. So yeah. what, what were your thoughts on it, Andrew? I think what gives me the most hope for it that it is going to be good is it's a two part movie. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah. I know that it's oh, not going that. to be right. Yeah, yeah. They it, it says that they have part one specifically. Ooh. So after seeing that, I'm like, okay, cool. Like you're not trying to cram all this They're stuff into like this. one telling. You're definitely gonna take your time to tell the story and make sure that it's done right. And so after just seeing that, I'm 
and super hot hype, especially two because I I love 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 the first one. I would probably put that in my top five comic book movies. Uh, of dude, all time. it's one of the few ones that I roll it's rewatch so good. every now and then, so I really dig it. What did you think? I thought it was uh, really good because I like multiverse thingies. The only thing is, like, when you come to the world, it's all Spider-Man just walking around. So they all coherent of each other. Like, they, like everybody knows the Spider-Verse kind of existed because it's like, there's no one, it's not like different universes and he's coming around these worlds. He went into a world and, like, there was like a, a Spider-Man cross guard where he's like telling them to walk across. It's like, <laughs> are they, they're all coherent of each other, which is, that brings back to your point. How it, now he's the catalyst. So I, I just hope they do a good job. It just seems like a, they did a super good job with the last one, but there's a lot of, like, I don't know if cyberpunky is the right term or the like colors and like, like the aesthetic blaster, of it. Yeah, the aesthetic. I just don't want them to go too overboard with it and forget a good story. Now that I know it's two parts, I completely think it's going to be in good hands because the first movie is fire. The trailer looked fire. I mean, I don't have any downs for it. I just hope they don't lose sight of a good yeah, story. Yeah, I think they established. But 2099 is my favorite, dude, and he just fucking slammed yeah, his ass. I'm like, I, yeah. if I see that, I'm good. I think they've established, and I thought I remember seeing it in the old 90s show, but maybe it's just in comics that Spider-Man, in some weird way, is like a central link between them, and that's why the Spider-Man always focus, on, like, that's why, I guess, more of the focus has been around why it's more important to show it, all these Spider-Man versus, like, a world of Iron Man. Like, Spider-Man, for some reason, has been that link, so that movie's gonna probably, I'm hoping, elaborate on that and kind of Hopefully. point out why Spider-Man is kind of this nucleus that that these these other universes kind of I want to say revolve around, but obviously they can you know they can talk with themselves where there's not a there's not a world of Iron Man or Hulk. It's yeah, Spider-Man. I right. so, see that explained well. That's yeah, me too. So yeah. awesome. So anything else on Spider Man into the Spider Verse boys? Excited for it. Definitely I like Spider Man. So, uh, I probably should have seen the, <laughs> I looked at the release date, but it's it's coming soon. So uh, I'm coming. The next question comes from uh, Jessica M, and they write, uh, "What was your favorite movie of the year?" I really like the Pinocchio movie that is on Netflix. Fantastic. So, Didn't smoke you. Yeah, so let's not confuse it with the Disney one that was with Tom Hanks that was absolute dog shit. But <laughs> the Guillermo del Toro one that's coming out on Netflix, um, if you're interested in watching it. I think it's out. Yeah, no, yeah, it's out now. But there, people were saying that it's supposed to be getting some um, Oscar buzz. And if it does it, get nominated, it's the fourth animated, fourth or fifth animated movie in history to be um, nominated for the best movie of the year. So... That's interesting. So I'm, I haven't watched it yet. I was trying. I was hoping to try to watch it before we did the show, just so I could be see if my thoughts yeah. was that it was an Oscar movie, but I didn't make it. I'll probably definitely watch it this weekend. But um, let's start this way, Andrew. What was your favorite movie of 2022? Uh, for mine, I think that especially because I had the most fun with it would be Bullet Train. I remember trying to tell these guys just go see it, go see it. I just had so much fun with that movie front to back, especially mm-hmm. the way the storytelling is done that. It's one of those movies you have to watch multiple times to really kind of get the full kind of complete story where you're, the second time you're watching, you're like, oh, I didn't notice that. I didn't notice this. And now all this stuff makes a lot more sense. Like, I just thought it was done so well that that's one of those, I was talking crazy the other day. I want a sequel, not with the same people, but like the same kind of chaotic environment. And obviously not a fucking bullet train, but something going on that's as chaotic and fun as this movie was. I think it says the same thing about Cyberpunk. <laughs> what was your favorite movie of twenty? Um, I didn't. This is the first year that I felt kind of um, like an old man. I didn't watch a ton of movies. I didn't get to play the ton of games that I usually get to do. So I only watched a finite set. But I think hands down, Top Gun Maverick was probably one of the best movies that was I've really seen. Good. That was a this thing. It was experience. one of the ones I'm so glad I watched it in theaters. They paid perfect homage to the original. Miles Teller was fantastic. Um, Tom Cruise did amazing. So I think that's just Looked a full amazing. on. Yeah, no wokeness, no political agenda, just a good American action movie. I am going to throw a second one in there. Clerks 3, I know we were supposed to watch it together. I watched it on a, a, a tangent. That world, if you if you like it, there's the View Askew universe. View Askew universe with all the different things. Like, if you're a fan, you're a fan. In this movie, dude, I cried. I cried like a 10-year-old little girl at the end of it. So if you are a fan of Clerks and the world, watch it. I thought it was amazing. They did justice to a lot of things, and, it, and they capped it on a really did you fine say, note. Did you say you rented it or you bought it? I rented it, but I'm not opposed to buying it. I was saying, I don't know why you just... Oh, well, you said you were drunk I was, watching it, right? I was drunk. Yeah, yeah buy I, it. I, still I texted I, TK afterwards. I'm like, I cried like a little bitch, man. He's like, yeah, hit, hit the yeah, I still haven't watched it because I was waiting for you. But yeah, if you, I said we just get it and... Oh, yeah, I would definitely watch it again. It, it was... It's solid. So as far as my favorite movie, I wouldn't say it's the best movie of the year. Because there's... I mean, obviously, if you're going to look at some of the Oscar buzz movies, like everything, everywhere, all at once, mm-hmm. like... 
solid solid movies are out there. But like Andrew was saying, the most fun I had, I think, watching a movie this year uh, was the new Batman movie. That, Loved it. That dropped on March 4th, 4th 2022. Um, a, I love Batman. I think we all kind of do. The cool thing is when you're able to reinterpret something that a lot of people have already put on a pedestal as being one of the best movies when you look at the Nolan trilogy, and then you are able to still make a new version of a character that already has over maybe 10 movies out so far, starting as far back as like the Michael Keaton ones. They, they were able to make a new one with Robert Pattinson, which I, I've always been in that guy's corner. <coughs> I like a lot of his movies. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are having issues that he's the Twilight kid, but... The fact that you were able to make a solid Bruce Wayne Batman combo with a guy that I think was a, was very undervalued at once upon a time as an actor was great. The fact that you were able to bring a character to light that I think has never been done properly. I mean, you can like Jim Carrey's version of the Riddler, but it's I but if you what, but if you read any movie. but if you read any comics or play any games, the Riddler is not a joke. He is yeah. a serious. <laughs> is that a pun? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, that'd be a Joker joke. He, he's an enigma, but uh, I don't know. So I think it was very clever. I mean. I'm hesitant to go into any movie that's over two hours, and this thing pushes the limit if it's almost hitting three. It's like going in and watching a Lord of the Rings movie. However, I thought the time flew by oh, dude. when I was watching that movie. I thought the yeah. action was great. I really liked Zoe Kravitz as, as the new Catwoman. I thought she was great. Yep. I thought there was a... I wouldn't say a missed opportunity, but the fact that they even kind of... It was an unnecessary scene. The one that they left in was unnecessary. The one they cut out, I thought, would have been better. But even showing a new light on Joker, which... Just we just saw the Joaquin version of Joker, so it's like the fact that this movie reinvented two iconic characters in a positive way. I was just super impressed with. Which and one did they leave in? The, well, the no, one the where, one the one where Joker out. and the Riddler talk at the end, in because like, they're like cellmates, they're next to oh. each other. It's completely useless. It doesn't move yeah. anything forward yeah. with the with the movie in terms of the one they cut out, where jo you're seeing the Joker actually analyze shit. Yeah, and that one, have yeah, that line. I'm like, in. that's the one you should have left, but. Yeah, so I'd say the most fun I had with, and it sucks that it came out so early, because now that we're getting closer to Oscars, you forget it's about, forgot about it, it. No we're talking yeah. about it. So I would Because honestly, I thought it came out in December. We were <laughs> like, I thought it came out last year. I was looking at it and was like, I mean, my next big one was Chippendale. <laughs> yeah, Chippendale was fantastic. That's, but I was telling the Andrew, I'm like, hey, I chose Batman. He's like, he's like, that was this year. I totally this thought year. it was I'm December. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, so thank you for the question. Any Great other thoughts on the movies, boys? It should have been four hours. I thought it was the best version of Gotham. Yeah, definitely let Gotham feel Yeah, I'm a huge fan. I it? think him and Radcliffe really uh, have done a lot of work to make themselves good actors. If you still think they're t Twilight and Harry Potter, that you, you know, go watch some, some of their movies. Definitely. So, um, the f last question comes from uh, Dwight C. And they write, What was your favorite video game moment of the year? Boss fight, online battle, good purchase, anything video game related. Mine was getting platinum on both Elden Ring and God of War. Ragnarok, yeah, that's that's a, it's always that's, an impressive feat to plat or one hundred percent a game. I, Elden Ring is very impressive because I mean I know it's I, I maybe it's been passed, but I know Raise it's, your hand if you hundred percent of it. I know it's been I know it's it's you can cheese it to get that plat and maybe they fixed it, maybe they haven't. But when you look at the number of people who have actually platinum Elden Ring, it's a higher percentage. Than most games that are easier, and that doesn't that doesn't take anything away from it. It means more people were invested in a game mm -hmm. to see it through. Whether that took you eighty hours, whether it took you one hundred and twenty hours, so the fact that this game held people's attention to not only beat it but to one hundred percent it just shows how, you know why that game was up and won for game Legs. of the year. Uh, as far as God of War Ragnarok, that game just so recently came out that you were able to put that much time into it. That's super impressive too. I would say, arguably, are the games of the year for whatever camp you're in. So, yeah, good job knocking out two of the best games of 2022. Um, so, as far as your best gaming moment, whether that be in a game or outside of a game involving it, uh, what was yours? Uh, mine would actually be part of what you said, Elden Ring, because I was caught up in that hype. That game came out, and I tell everyone on side, like, that mo that game came out, and it didn't just come and go. Like, that game came out and was a cultural phenomenon, and it was one of, I, I think it's like the second or third game, like, I've ever streamed almost like front to back so having that experience with all these other people watching me and just talking to people and playing it that's something that i really think of and i had just the other thing that sticks out with me recently too from something like that is when i did resident evil village just doing something and streaming and talking to you guys really stands out to me so much and like just means the world that anyone would even hang out with me while i'm doing these things that that just instantly is like burned in my memory i was on that stream 
I know. A couple times. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody. So no, it's fun. That it's... for me was just great. You said that and dude, it like echoed. Like I could hear it like behind you, like, bouncing that, off of something. That. Uh, what was your favorite? Well, shout out to Augie, too, for Platinum God of War. He oh, sent yeah. me a video. I'm like, post it. He's like, no one wants to see my stuff. I want to see your stuff. Yeah, I'll post, post it on this it. show. I like post. to see what everyone else is yeah. doing. Um, I haven't played a ton of games, so mine are more of just two moments that popped up. I just pre-ordered Diablo 4, which all that means is it's tangible. It's going to be June of next year. I'm a huge Diablo so fan. I, dude, I, the biggest, the $99 one, like the, it opens you up to the beta. That's huge. I really... That's gonna be. I'm gonna be lost, dude. You guys, I'm from June to October. Good, I you guys, you lost you guys won't see me. So uh, I think De- uh, I posted a thing and Devin Collins. I think we're supposed to do a thing. Michael Gantenbein. Like I want to get a group and fucking play. Uh, the next thing that I really liked was um, the Level Up Expo is gonna be in Vegas uh, in fe- February. So just two months away. It's gonna, we haven't done that in a while. So it's gonna be me, Craig, Since the last Mandrew, one? CN. Yeah, but, but you they know, canceled it. Then. They canceled it. Oh, yeah. We, so we, we didn't. Year, we didn't we? get to go last year. Yeah. I thought we went this year. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Uh, so it's just nice that we're all going to be able to go to oh, yeah, a, no, we did, a game thing. I think we missed 2021. Yeah, we went I this missed, year. Oh, uh, was it? Dude, that they're all flying by. Because this year is where I dress up as Punisher. It's just nice that year's over, new tickets are there, and it's not, because usually it's like March, May, whatever. It'll be February, and we're all going to be together, so I like that we're all I like it. starting the year out right. Yeah, I look forward to those things, and I love it First when, we, quarter. when we go in as a good group. Um, so my favorite moment is running through... Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. It was such a nice breath of fresh air. Because me and Gino used to play all the Ninja Turtle games back in the day. And this one was a good throwback to games like Turtles in Time. And it's one of the few games that I beat multiple times this year. I had a blast. I I beat it five or six different times with different people. So I beat it once with um, Daniel and Melissa. Mm -hmm. I was playing with them. I played it once with B. Castro. Beat it with him. I beat it once with Denny Six. I beat it once with Gino. I'm, I'm one of my favorite parts. Were you on that one and Dante? I don't remember, but one one of the ones. Dante no, you one. you mean Dante played one together for a little bit, uh-huh. and then I uh, got off. And my, so my my favorite part about it was um, Gino's son, my nephew Grayson, is is at the point where he's playing games now. So my first official game that I was able to actually because I know you've done a couple Lego games with him. So but, so started with Lego to see if he could grasp it, yeah. and he can. So my first game beating it with Grayson was Ninja Turtles. Shredder's Revenge. So that's always now that will always hold a special place in my heart to do it. And it, I mean, and the game's that good. I mean, it's I don't good. I don't play a lot of games multiple times. And the fact that I went back on this game and beat it f- five plus times, a with, handful. Yeah, with good people, good friends. I'm like, it? no, because I still need I still need a couple more beats. It's a grindy. It's and grindy. I, just, I, was, I don't because me and yeah. you didn't do a run yet, so I was still I still need to do a couple runs because you got to get every character up to like level ten. And you can only do that by doing multiple playthroughs. So, mm-hmm. um, and I, I, you know, I even beat it once solo playing it. So, uh, whenever you're ready to do yours, do you let me know because I still, I think I'm on Michelangelo right now and I'm leveling. I'm him off up. Monday because I, I maxed out. So much. I think I maxed out Casey Jones, Splinter, Leonardo. Right now, I'm working on Michelangelo. So, don't I gotta forget do that. about your don't, don't forget about your Mikeys and Tellos. <laughs> uh, so yeah, those were the best uh, video game moments we had this year, guys. Leave your favorite memories that you had of 2022 and all of its gaming. Awesome. So, I'll save it for last. guys, um, that is the end of this episode. We went a lot longer than I thought we were going to, but end of the year episode, man. I love doing this stuff with you guys. So, uh, guys, that is the end of episode 157. Join us next time, next year, for episode 158. So, until next year, guys, my name is Craig Prowls. This is Gino Prowls. That is Andrew Montman. Until next time, guys, cheers. Right, 15,000 subscribers.